Hello, welcome to the show. Thanks for tuning in. Good to have you along. Right, stand by. On the way next, we have a potentially incredibly controversial interview uh, with someone about something that we've not touched on the show yet because it's so controversial. But we've got a year under our belt now. You know, people who understand what the show's about, they get the deal. Um, so we're going to talk about aspartame. Uh, and aspartame is uh, a, a sweetener, as I understand it. And it's, there's an enormous controversy that surrounds it. And uh, it's something that, well, listen, we'll get her on and we'll talk to her about it. Uh, the person I'm talking about is Betty Martini. She's an expert in this kind of stuff. She can tell us all about it. Uh, and potentially this could be an interview that will make a dramatic change to your health and your own personal well-being. Correct. The Night Before with Nick Margerison. My name's Nick Jerison. Right, we got Dr. Betty Martini with us, and she has some unbelievable information that really you want to take note of, and it's advice that I've started applying to my own life. She's been talking about something called aspartamine, which is, uh, I don't know, I think it's a sweetener. Let's get her on the air. Dr. Betty Martini, what a great name. Thanks for joining us. Oh, thank you for having me on your show. And uh, do you ever drink martini? Actually, I'm a teetotaler. I don't drink. <laughs> oh, well, not to worry. Uh, listen, let me ask you. I, I, one of the things that grabs my attention about you that I want you to tell the nation about is I think the last time you came here, they imprisoned you in immigration and they kept you there for a few hours. What happened? You arrived here in the United Kingdom. What happened? Well, as uh, they, immigration told me to follow them, they didn't ask me who I was. They knew who I was. They locked me up three and a half hours. And they said, uh, if we allow you in England, how many people will find out about the dangers of aspartame? Not exactly what immigration usually asks. And they confiscated all the lecture material. They did give it back later. I mean, I told them, look, you're between a rock and a hard place. If you send me back to America, I'm front page news in Europe. And then they sent me to a doctor who told them, he said, um, let this woman go, and you give her back everything that you've confiscated. So why the turnaround? How come that guy stepped in? I was carrying this humongous book called Aspartame Disease and Ignored Epidemic, which is uh, the medical text, and I laid it down on uh, the doctor's uh, table, or they did. They had confiscated it, and he said, Aspartame Disease? He says, I use it. I said, well, you're going to die. He says, but I'm diabetic. I said, well, you're going to die first. And he looked through the book and found out, you know, that it can precipitate diabetes. He says, what can I do? And, of course, I said, I'd give you the information, but they've confiscated it. And then someone else in immigration said, well, my daughter drinks diet soda and has thyroid problems. I said, well, it causes uh, hypothyroidism, but uh, if you get her off of it, she'll be all right after a while. He says, well, they removed her thyroid. I said, oops, I knew I should have come earlier. And about that time, he said, let this woman go immediately and you give her back everything that you confiscated. I, I think when immigration get involved in things like that, it does sort of highlight your cause and make people think, hang on a minute, these people must have something to say or, you know, the powers that be wouldn't be so concerned about them moving around. Um, aspartame, right, tell me what it is. How does it work? I don't understand what it is. Okay, well, first of all, uh, it's masquerading as an additive, but it is in reality what is called an addictive excitoneurotoxic carcinogenic drug that interacts with virtually all of your drugs. And uh, the FDA did not want to approve it. They tried to indict the manufacturer, but both U.S. prosecutors hired on with the defense team, and the statute of limitations expired. Now, Donald let me just Rump clarify that the FDA, that's the Food and Drugs Authority in America, right? Right. And uh, they knew they couldn't get it approved, so they, they hired Don Rumsfeld. And I, I think you know who he is. Donald Rumsfeld. <laughs> he's the guy who shook hands with Saddam Hussein, right? <laughs> right. <he's, laughs> but he's uh, the defense secretary in America, yeah. Right. So anyway, uh, he said he'd call on his markers and get it approved because the FDA actually revoked the petition for approval. So uh, President Reagan, the day after he took office, he appointed Arthur Hull Hayes as FDA commissioner, had the transition team call and fire the FDA commissioner, and then wrote an executive order making the FDA powerless to do anything about it, 
Hayes overruled the Board of Inquiry, then went to work for the PR agency of uh, the manufacturer at $1,000 a day on a 10-year contract and has refused to talk to the press ever since. So he sold his soul for $365 million. So these people have been bribed into accepting aspartame. I mean, it wasn't passing the tests, and they were strong-armed into passing it through. Why? What, is it just purely bribery? Who's bribing these people, and, and who wants this in our food chain? Well, first of all, it's addictive. It's, it's uh, like cocaine. And they had already built a factory, and it spent $17 million, and they were intent on getting uh, this approved. And it's extremely uh, deadly, and you should be interested to know that any country, knowing what went on in the United States, would have never approved it. There were no tests in the U.K. at all, and the way that it even got over there was because the original manufacturer made a business deal with <laughs> your agency. Parliament found out about it, having a big blowout, but they never did rescind the order in the U.K., and this is why, when I was over there, and I, I lectured there twice, you found the same problems uh, as in the United States. Seizures, autism, all kinds of birth defects, you know, dizziness, uh, abdominal pain, change in vision, people going blind, uh, fatigue, uh, hives, uh, irregular heart rhythm. It damages the cardiac conduction system and causes sudden death, the reason a lot of our athletes are dropping dead now i've got friends who are well into this kind of stuff i was told to avoid aspartame uh, uh, just you know to check for it on packets and stuff like that and avoid it and at that point i was on a diet i was using sweeteners uh, so i was consuming aspartame and and i had this thing where i was kind of feeling like you say tired fatigue uh, minor breathing problems and, and and feeling quite tired all the time and i thought it was just because on diet so um I cut it out anyway after this guy started banging on at me about how it, it, it's something that they use to preserve corpses or something. I don't know what the detail was, but it was one of those things where he's talking to me about. I cut it out, and do you know what? My fatigue lifted. It really made a massive change uh, when I cut out the sweeteners that contained it. Well, let me explain to you about that. First of all, uh, it destroys the immune system. is why it causes fatigue. But about that embalming, the formaldehyde that is converted from the free methyl alcohol that's in aspartame embalms living tissue and damages DNA. So you're talking about a drug masquerading as an additive that not only damages the cardiac conduction system and causes sudden death, but actually embalms you. And that's a very, very serious thing. And it is so well documented that we have the government records on our websites and uh, that's insane do you know what i always thought he was just nuts this is literally a conversation you know with a mate of mine in the pub and he's saying now oh, they use this kind of stuff to embalm corpses you want to stop using it and and i just i mean i followed his advice because he's a, he's a clever guy but I, I thought he was exaggerating you're telling me that's true that's absolutely true and the fda toxicologist said look this violates the Delaney Amendment, which says you cannot put anything in food you know will cause cancer. And because it, without a shadow of a doubt, causes brain tumors, it breaks down to a brain tumor agent. And he said, if the FDA violates its own law, who's left to protect the public? So aspartame is on the market illegally. It's adulterated. It violates interstate uh, commerce laws because you can't ship something uh, adulterated for sale. And it's a, a deadly carcinogen. And I have can talked I, to, Can I, I talk, listen? I want to ask you a question. I, I, you're making your case really strongly. And, uh, and, and like I say, the, one of the reasons you're on air uh, is because, you know, I did, I did follow the advice of someone who told me to stop taking aspartame, uh, aspartame or whatever it's called. Uh, and, and, and when I stopped taking it, yeah, so my headaches lifted. I stopped feeling as tired. But one of the things that I want to get out of you here is... And I don't know if this is true either. I, I've been told that in the UK, here where we are, it's sometimes hidden in foods. Because you know those E numbers, it's hidden. As a, so you can check the ingredients of some things, think, oh, it's got none of it in, it's fine. But actually, it's a bloody E number. Yes, it's E951. And uh, someone did a video of a lecture there and called it E951, the number of death. And that really needs for people to know that. 
and it's you know you get your vitamins from industry and they actually have this in the vitamins and i've had a lot of calls from the uk because they were in vitamins that you had to swallow you can understand them sweetening something that's chewable or flavored but they're putting them in there on purpose because you wouldn't you wouldn't taste it and here in the united states uh it's in so many drugs used to treat the very problems it causes. Like, for instance, it's in Maltex used for headaches, and it causes uh, uh, headaches is number one on the FDA list. It actually uh, interacts with L-DOPA, with Parkinson's, and so they put it in Parcopa, and they have it in anti-seizure medication, and seizures is listed five times on the FDA list of 92 symptoms. So the number that people need to hammer home into the head is E951. You're looking out for that. Uh, E951, aspartamine. I mean, we live in a country, uh, and I'm talking now to the people listening to me and you talk, talking at the moment. We live in a country where they will put a warning uh, on, on various different food products saying may contain nuts, uh, yet it's actually a country where uh, this ingredient that uh, you're saying... Um, uh, Dr. Betty Martini is such a dangerous uh, ingredient. It's something that most people won't even even have heard of. We live in a country where that's actually hidden. E951, man, I don't know what to make of all this. I really don't. Well, you know, I have talked to food standards many, many, many times. And I've also found out that there is a regulation in your country that it cannot be given to children three years or under, and it's being done so anyway. One of the props I used was a bottle of a toddler's drink and i looked in it and it all it had in it was aspartame and uh a couple of other sweeteners that are toxic and citric acid and no food whatsoever and i said you wonder why so many kids over here have add adhd uh tourette's autism and of course it's a teratogen and causes birth defects and mental retardation but this is the reason is that food standards allows it, even though your regulations say that you cannot give this to babies and children, at least up to the age of three. Man, do you know what? Dr. Betty Martini, I want to thank you for taking some time out uh, to join us here on the show. And do you know what? I, you're a friend of the show. And if you come over here to the UK, uh, you'll have to tell us. I, I, I'll make a point of sending someone to meet you at the airport so immigration <laughs> don't get involved. Right. Your website again is... MPWHI.com. It stands for Mission Possible World Health International. And also Doorway.com, which is 10 in the door, D O R W A Y.com. Do you know what? I want to thank you for joining us on the show. And thank you, Nick. Right. So, what the hell was that about then? 0845 688 1052. Call the show with your analysis of that interview. 0845 688 1052. We'll make you a priority call. Talk to you in a second. It's Karan. The night before with Nick Mar Jerison. Uh, I want to get quite a few calls on tonight. I'm going to move on to Steve in Birmingham, uh, 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 who's got a, a comment on aspartame. Uh, Steve, have you heard of this stuff before then? Oh, by the way, before we have this conversation, don't mention any brand products. It's up to people themselves to look into, uh, you know, which products may or may not contain dangerous stuff. But, but have you ever heard about aspartame before? Uh, yes, I have. Um, only basically through my own usage. Um, I have uh, mental health problems, which I won't name. Mm -hmm. um, but they do affect my moods. Anyway, I was diagnosed four years ago with having diabetes, so I went on to aspartame as an artificial sweetener. Yeah. Uh, a friend of mine noticed after two years of taking aspartame um, that whenever I had a, a coffee or a tea with aspartame in it, that my moods would change more often and more frequently, and she recommended that I came off it because she was training to be a herbalist. Yeah. Um, I did that, and all of a sudden, uh, within about a month, started having major nosebleeds, migraines, went to the doctor, blood pressure was normal, heart was normal, blood tests were normal. They couldn't figure out what the problem was. Um, in the end, I got so absolutely fed up with this, I went to a proper trained herbalist who said, well, actually, you're addicted to a spa time, your body is actually addicted to it. It's now, a cocaine derivative, apparently. Well, I didn't. I did not know that until no. she told me, and it took her about six months to wean me off a spa time, slowing down off the 
whether it be a tablet or granular form, onto natural honey. Well, this is, I mean, the thing is, I'm glad you've made this call because this, I mean, I said it before we did the interview and after the interview, I'll, I'll say it again, it is actually, believe it or not, one of the most controversial things we've aired on the show ever. And it's something that we shied away for. Now it's our one year anniversary. We thought, right, let's pull the stops out. Let's start dishing out some truth nuggets. Let's actually cover a spa time. And it's one of those things that when I stopped, when I made a point of cutting it out of my diet, I felt physically a lot better than I did before. Now, that may just be in my head, who knows, but it, that's what happened. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I do know exactly what you mean. I mean, yes, I mean, when I did stop, I had, like, migraines and nosebleeds, but that's because... Withdrawal? As, as, as you said, it was like a withdrawal symptom. God. But, but now, after being on natural honey and aspartame has been cut out of my diet completely for quite a while, the nosebleeds have suddenly stopped, migraines have stopped, my health has improved. Yes, I still have my mental health condition, but yeah. my mood swings aren't as frequent. Wow. So maybe there just might be something in it. Let me tell you, Steve, thanks for sharing that with us. That's amazing. Steve in Birmingham. Correct. The Night Before with Nick Marjorison.